Hey folks, Ray from DCRamerica.com here. Today I've got Gorman's newest device, uh, actually two new devices. I've got the 4935 and I've got the RD Pod. Um, now this video is all about the RD Pod or the Running Dynamics Pod. Uh, you can see my separate video about the 935 up there. Um, but this one I just want to talk about what this tiny little pod is. Now this pod is like the size of a quarter, uh, not even a quarter, it's, it's really, really small, uh, very, very tiny. And what it's designed to do is replace the Garmin Running Dynamics data that you usually have to get from a heart rate strap. So right now I have here a Garmin HRM Run strap. Um, this came out a couple years ago uh, in different formats. This is kind of like the second gen version that has this little red rubber piece around it. Uh, there's also the HRM Try, which is the same sort of thing, and it's producing running dynamic data. So that's things like vertical oscillation, ground contact time, all that kind of stuff. It also does cadence. It actually does not do pace. It's a bit of a misconception folks have. Uh, there is no pace coming out of this. It's just purely cadence and some of the other metrics I just mentioned. Um, the problem with this, though, is that as you move to optical sensor uh, enabled watches, like, for example, the 935, the Phoenix 5, the 735 XT, um, all of these, you know, they have an optical sensor, so you don't really want to have another strap uh, just to get that data that sort of defeats the whole purpose, thus the pod. So the pod simply snaps on to the back of your running shorts, uh, so you just put it basically like this, slide it in there, hopefully you can see this, uh, super simple, right there, and that's it. And then what I do is I go ahead on my unit right here, so hopefully you can see this. If I were to start my watch uh, and go into the run screen, it says RD pod connected, that means it's ready to go. Uh, and then it's going to acquire my heart rate via the heart rate sensor, the optical sensor that you see on the bottom there, uh, just as it normally would. Uh, so pretty straightforward. Um, it's super, super easy to use. Now what this allows me to get, if I go ahead and dive into the pages here, uh, you'll now see that I've got the running dynamics pages. So I go down there, there's the ground contact time balance, the ground contact time cadence, it's found GPS by the way, which is moderately impressive because I'm standing against a giant wall. Like this, this camera, just so you can see this real quick, is sitting on this ring and this ring goes, I mean, the wall goes way up. So I'm kind of impressed by that. Uh, hope I can get it back onto the ring there. There we go. Um, anyways, as I was saying, if we look here at this, uh, sorry, at the time, but you can see that this is the vertical ratio page. Also, it was part of the running dynamics piece, vertical oscillation and stride length. Um, stride length actually technically is a part of running dynamics, but it's something that uh, it's just there on the same page. So, with that, what we're going to do is go have it running. Now, the reason why I have all the extra watches here is twofold. One, I'm testing the optical heart rate sensor on the 935, uh, but two, more importantly, I'm interested to see if I pair this uh, Phoenix 5, um, which I have paired right now, to the heart rate strap, the HRM run. Um, I want to see if the metrics are the same. So, are the RD pod metrics, that little thing back there, the exact same as the HRM run, um, or are they going to differ? Hopefully, they're the same, you know, within a reasonable tolerance, just being measured in different places. Um, but uh, hopefully they're the same, that's, that's sort of the goal here. And then of course for fun, I'll check out things like optical heart rate sensor accuracy uh, because of the fact that I have uh, this one paired to the heart rate strap, this one on my wrist, this one, this by the way is the Sunto Spartan Sport Wrist HR. It's also got optical heart rate sensor in the bottom there, you can kind of see blinking. And then last but not least, the 735 XT is paired to the Skosh Rhythm Plus that you can see right there. The RD pod will be compatible with the Phoenix 5 series. In fact, this beta version right here, our beta firmware already has compatibility. Also coming to the 735 XT if you have that. Uh, if you have the older Phoenix 3, it sounds like you're out of luck. Um, which is kind of silly to me because honestly, like it's extra money for Garmin. They're just selling something at this point. They've already sold you on the watch, so why not sell whatever. Um, I don't make up those things, but hopefully maybe I'll change your mind. With that, let's get started running. I'll show you what things look like here uh, before it gets dark and before it starts running too much harder. Um, one little thing I want to show you now because it'll be too late or too dark after the fact is that when you finish your run and you escape out of this, um, because if you're like me, you're going to forget you have the pod on there. Uh, in just a second, it'll show you right there. Remember to move your RD pod, uh, press OK. So anytime you finish a run, it reminds you to remove this so you don't stick it to the wash. Um, Hopefully you remember, uh, I probably won't. I haven't stuck it to the wash yet, I'm kind of curious. It is waterproof to a degree and it should survive more or less just fine the washing machine. It's really the dryer that tends to F things up uh, when it comes to electronics uh, that are waterproof. Um, also, it does have a coin cell battery in it, so it's nothing that you should charge USB. Coin cell battery should last a year or two and it costs like two bucks to buy another one. Uh, so anyways, let's go run. You know, Paris is, looks also picturesque when people are in umbrellas and it's raining. They're taking photos right now in front of Notre Dame. Here's the thing. When it's raining, it's still raining. It's still not nice. Don't let Instagram fool you. 
down. Okay, so here we are running along. Sorry, I'm losing light more than I thought, so this might be a little bit dark. Um, but what you can see right here is the ground contact time balance. That's coming from the RD pod itself. If I look at the data um, from the HRM run, another watch is kind of hard to show you both because I'm out of hands. Uh, it's virtually mirroring it within like a unit or two, meaning one will say like 50.7, the other says 50.5. It's pretty darn close. But you can see there I'm getting the ground contact time. I'm getting the ground contact balance. As I go up this hill right here, you'll see this start to shift. So you can see the ground contact time increasing a bit. If I change the page now, there's the vertical ratio, vertical oscillation, and the stride length, clear on the top of the hill. So this will get a little bit better here in a second. Now, what I'll do here in this little section is just sprint a little bit to show you the difference in the data. So it's uh, 6.2. As I go ahead and start increasing, you'll see it's jumping, changing 5.7, 5.3. So it's shifting as you expect, but realistically, we're going to go back inside and check out the data and see how it looks between the two units. For fun, I'll play a little bit with the balance right now. So what I'm going to do with the ground contact balance is shift my weight a little bit from left to right and that'll show you kind of the change there so you'll see right now showing 51.2 percent to the right so i'm going to change my my uh running stride a little bit there to even get to shift over without hitting any poles there we go so i'm now at 50 50 trying to shift things a bit more and it's actually kind of hard to do, to be honest, which is somewhat the problem I have with run dynamics in general, is that it's not super clear what you're supposed to do with some of these metrics, and then how you're supposed to change them, or even if you're supposed to change them. Like, I can tell you that if I try to make my GCT balance balance to 50%, I'm gonna injure myself because that's something I'm trying to change my gait naturally, and it just feels awkward. So I think there's still a lot to be done there in terms of deciding whether or not you should change things. Okay, so that wraps up the run a bit. Now remember, as I mentioned before, you don't want to forget your RD pod. So after we save the run here, so I'll just go by save. Well, as I said before, what it's going to do First off, it's going to show you your records like normal, so nothing too fancy there. It's going to show me the VO2 max because it's a new one. It's going to show me training effect. Uh, that's also new 935 stuff. Uh, recovery hours. And then if I go into the details here, I know it's probably tough for you to see. Um, details again. I can go down and I can see. There we go. Vertical oscillation, vertical ratio, so GCT, GCT balance and stride length. Uh, things coming from the watch itself. Now, watch what happens when I hit done. It's gonna go and do its updating thing like normal, just updating the database internally. Um, and then, in a second, you'll see it remind me to remove the RD pod. So one tip you can do here is to take the little pod out and you can just simply put it on your shoe so you don't forget. Um, that way you know where it is at all times. Uh, it's on your running shoe, it's certainly not gonna fall off and then the next time you go ahead, you see uh, that reminder when you connect to the pod, you're good to go. What? You don't have that many pods in your shoes either? Amateurs. Okay, so here we are inside looking at the two files side by side. This is both on Garmin Connect, and the reason is that uh, simply I don't have another way to basically analyze or view running dynamics data. Um, I can view every other type of data except for running dynamics data in other tools. So on the left-hand side here, I've got the uh, 41935 with the RD pod. Um, you can see the running dynamics pod is listed right there as an actual accessory, which is kind of cool that it actually shows that. Um, on the right-hand side here, I've got the Phoenix 5 that was paired to an HRM run strap, um, and uh, 
Uh, you can see it down here. This is, of course, just the, the general map and stuff like that on both of these. Uh, as we scroll down, we want to get to the pieces that are relevant to our conversation. Um, part of that is stride length, but not as much. Go down a little bit further here. We've got uh, stride length, run cadence, vertical oscillation, ground contact time, uh, and those are the core ones. And then as we go and click on this little uh, drop down there, I can get a vert vertical ratio, and then uh, ground contact time balance on this one down there. Um, now, run cadence is actually not something that is part of run dynamics. Uh, Garmin's been a bit confusing there in the last couple of years, I think actually on purpose, to be honest, um, as a way to try to convince you to buy uh, an HRM run, HRM try, or now the running dynamics pod. Uh, but, but cadence actually comes in all of the Garmin wearables these days uh, from the wrist itself. So there is no need if you just care about cadence to get any of one of these other accessories, it's just it's unnecessary. Um, so with that in mind, uh, let's look at some of the different things. One is stride length. So on the 935, I get my average stride length right there on the right hand side. Uh, you can see that at 1.20 and on the Phoenix 5 at 1.19 meters. Uh, so again, very, very close on both of these. Uh, run cadence, um, the average, let me get this out of the way there, on the 400 935 on the left hand side is 173. You can see that right there. And over here, it's 172. Uh, sorry, I kind of keep sliding over the, uh, the reader thing there. Um, on the left hand side, we'll go to vertical oscillation. This is where we start talking actual uh, running dynamics pieces. Um, so over here, the average is 8.3 on the left hand side of uh, vertical oscillation, whereas on the right hand side, it comes in at 9.0. Um, now you may think that's close, and yeah, it is kind of close, but it's also kind of not close too. Um, I did a post back a couple weeks ago or a month ago or something like that on running dynamics and also the running efficiency metrics, uh, and that's actually a bit of a spread, more than I, I would have liked to have seen, uh, to be honest. Um, whether or not you have anything to do with that metric, I'm not sure, but that is actually more spread than I would have uh, anticipated. Um, if I go to now change these over to uh, vertical ratio on both of these real quick here. So that, that one there will change us to this one here. Uh, you can see that the plots do look, I mean, almost identical. Like they're very, very similar. Uh, it is, you're seeing some slight differences though. Like, okay, so right here around the 8, 20 minute marker, um, we've got that red dot that you see up there. That's definitely a high point. Uh, and you can see that mirrored here as well um, over on the vertical ratio chart right there. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is some of these charts are different. So right now the scale on this goes to 15, whereas over here the scale goes to 20. Uh, so that's something that, you know, you do have to keep that in mind, and I can't change the scale in these charts, unfortunately. Um, otherwise, I'd make them identical. So you are seeing like this high one looks there, it's about 12, uh, and this one looks about 14 for that high marker. And that's where you're gonna start to see some of the differences there, where it seems to be picking up a little bit of difference in the, the mins and the maxes, which can draw your averages out a bit. Um, so we'll go on down to ground contact time at the bottom here. I'll just scroll up to kind of put this in the middle of your screen for you. So ground contact time, there we go, left and right. Um, the average on the left-hand side is 250 uh, point, let's see, 250.6, I think it is. Yeah, it's kind of hard to read there. Um, and then over here, it's 259.1. That is actually fairly close for ground contact time. Uh, if I look back at the data that I had in the past between units of different types, uh, I would have loved to see something of that close uh, between different manufacturers. So the fact that it's within uh, nine milliseconds is pretty good. And I think, again, you're looking at those uh, minimums and the uh, maximums probably drawing the averages out a little bit better or a little bit more. If I had a medium value, that would probably be a little easier to compare between the two of them. Um, again, you look at these two charts, they're very similar. Uh, the one on the right-hand side, though, does have um, its access at the bottom at zero versus the one on the left-hand side is at 200. Uh, so that's going to skew this, this metric quite a bit more uh, than I would have wanted, but um, in terms of what you see in these graphs, but nonetheless, it's, uh, they're looking pretty darn similar there. Ground contact time balance now. Let's look at this. So here we go on this. Uh, again, these look pretty darn similar up front, but then they look different here, like down in this area, we're not even picking up um, on the chest strap here, this, this drop right there to the right hand side, uh, whereas on the RD pod, we are picking it up. Um, and this does seem aligned to my different intervals. So whether or not one of these is right or wrong, that's a, I don't know, there's really no way for me to know that, um, to know whether or not I'm, I'm shifting something or doing something differently. Uh, it does seem aligned to intervals, which does make sense that, you know, as I'm shifting a pace, I could be doing something different from a running stance standpoint. Um, and that's sort of my challenge with some of these metrics. A is how do you even use this data? And then B, in the case of like ground contact balance, um, I've certainly seen things on the HRM run, HRM try, which is the right hand side here, uh, where just even shifting the orientation of the strap, like having a little bit higher on one side of your chest versus the other can, can tweak that stuff. So 
Uh, I'm, again, I'm just kind of giving the data. I'm not really sure, honestly, what to do with it because I don't personally find a lot of value in it. Um, Let's look at the final averages down the bottom just for the fun of it, just because it's easy to compare these down here. Uh, so on the left-hand side, um, we have Cadence. And now keep in mind, Cadence, once you do have the Running Dynamics pod or um, the HRM Try, HRM uh, Run straps, does actually override uh, the accelerometer-based Cadence from the wrist, and same with the foot pod as well. So these are pretty similar, as you'd expect to see within one... Uh, SPM, so one steps per minute. Uh, and then max cadence, we do see some differences there, which again, it gets down to like, you could have that one split second recording of, of some moment. So I don't generally put much emphasis on maxes at all in anything, whether it be max power or anything for one second uh, is really tough to, to reconcile correctly. Um, if you're talking like a few seconds, that's a different ball game, but one second stuff. Average stride length comes in at uh, within 0.01 meters. Average vertical ratio, uh, we talked about that earlier, uh, 6.8 to 7.5%. Average vertical oscillation, 8.1 centimeters to 9.0 centimeters. Again, a little more difference than I want to see there. Uh, average GCT balance, it looks close, uh, you know, it's, but the chart obviously tells a different story. In that case, 48.3 on the left-hand side to 49.2 on the left-hand side on the uh, strap, and then 51.7 to 50.8 on the right-hand side. And then finally, average ground talk, average ground contact time, 251 milliseconds over here on the RD pod and 259 milliseconds on the HRM uh, heart rate strap there. So there you go, just a look at those metrics. You know, I like the idea of an RD pod. I like the fact that uh, it's a separate little thing now. I really like the way they've done the reminder message after that. It's probably like my favorite feature of the whole thing. Um, I don't personally, though, find a lot of value in the data it brings. And I've still kind of been harping on Garmin on this for years now and, and putting forth some sort of recommendations on how to actually use this data. Um, they've, they've kind of put it out there as a marketing thing, which is fine, but actually back it up with science. And right now there's no backing up any of this data um, with science, uh, any studies that can actually show how this works out on the road and show what it benefits an athlete, um, either in training or racing. And I realize that some of that takes time. It takes years to develop that sort of thing. But at the same time, they've also had this functionality out now for coming on almost three years, I believe. So uh, it's time. With that, thanks for watching. Go ahead and whack that like button down below as well as the subscribe button. Also check out a bunch of the other Phoenix 5 videos that you see around the screen right now. Uh, lots of cool stuff from open water swimming to a, a totally deep dive on the 935 itself, um, as well as one on uh, the Training Peaks piece and of course the menus and all that stuff. It's all in there uh, and all those videos. Have a good one.